Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today we will go through the escalating conflict between America and Iran, looking at the both sides and try to figure out how a war could look like between these two, who would eventually win and what would the outcome be. Before we start, don't forget to hit the like button, comment your opinion down below and subscribe to the channel. Make sure that you hit the notification button and support us on either Patreon side or simply our PayPal account. Don't miss out our new shop where you can buy your Kurdish products right now with a 15% discount. And remember that this discount is available for another 10 days only. So make sure that you take this chance. Link to everything I just mentioned will be provided in the description box below. Now, without further ado, let's get into the video. So, on one side we have the United States and on the other side we have Iran. Let's look at their conditions. The United States has a population on approximately 327 million people, while Iran has a population on approximately 84 million. Looking at these numbers, we have to point out that the American people are a very proud people and a very patriotic people. While the Iranian people for certain feel the same way about their nation, but has a split within themselves over the ruling Islamic government, where there is a rather big group within the nation of Iran who see the Islamic Republic of Iran as their clear enemy. Iran also has a Kurdish minority of about 10 million people, where most of these has a clear dream of achieving independence from Iran and form their own Kurdistan. So with this fact considered, the United States has a clear advantage in their much bigger and more united population. Looking at the army size, the United States again has the advantage. While the states has a total military of 2,146,000, the Iranian army reaches about 890,000. Now, for a more detailed army comparison, I will share a very good 2020 updated link in the description box below if you want to check that out. But for now, let's continue with our video. So, one thing that would be a total game changer is which allies does the two countries have? Starting by the US, we have two certain allies and those are Saudi Arabia and Israel. Now, while Iran is the superpower of the Shia world, Saudi Arabia is a superpower of the sunny world and this is where these two countries main rivality comes from. Israel has a very hostile relationship with Iran, not at least because of Iran's active support to Palestine, but also to their active support to Hezbollah and their burning wish to put back Jerusalem under Islamic control. Qasem Soleimani, who recently was killed by the US, the main reason to why this conflict started up again, was the leader of the Iranian Quds Force. Now, the word Quds is the Arabic word for Jerusalem, and maybe this says something about what Soleimani's long perspective goal was. Another ally that the United States has is NATO, and possibly the Kurds, but we will get into this in a moment. Now, what about Iran? Certain allies that Iran has is Russia, Syria, Iraq and several insurgency groups in the area such as Hezbollah, Palestinian insurgency, the Houthi rebels in Yemen and the PMU in Iraq. Now, one side who would play a huge and important role is Turkey. Turkey has been playing on both sides for the last five years and in the latest killing of Soleimani, Turkey started by not saying a word about the situation, being completely quiet. Eventually, Erdogan calls Soleimani a martyr and this is what Trump had to say about that. But I don't hear anybody else complaining. Mr. Uh, President, uh, you call him a monster, but your friend Erdogan calls him a martyr. What is well, the that's everybody to each his own. I mean, I disagree 100% and I'm sure he does too, but he has a public to take care of and I guess that's for his own reason, but I'm actually surprised to hear that, but that's okay. Are you willing to make a deal with Greece regarding F-35, sir? Now, Turkey would need to choose a side eventually, and this would 
also be crucial for their future within the NATO. The NATO has a further duty to assist their member states in wars. So with NATO on US back, US once again has the upper hand. However, by Turkey moving to Iran's side, we would definitely see World War 3 here. And to be fair, I don't think that this would happen. But you never know. What I do think, however, is that this conflict right now could escalate to a one versus one war, either in another country with proxy armies or in both Iran and the US. So many people talk about Iraq as the most natural place where this proxy war would be taking place, but I actually think that this proxy war would go on further than that, involving several countries like Yemen, Iraq, Syria and Lebanon. Now the US would definitely use Saudi Arabia and Israel as strategic points to carry out their attacks, since the United States are too far away. Of course, Turkey would also be used as a strategic point depending on which side they end up taking. The US would also use several bases available on Kurdish soil which even are closer to Iran. The question is, will the Kurds be used again as proxy forces of the states? Unfortunately, and I say unfortunately because last time the Kurds were used, over 1000 Kurdish fighters died. And unfortunately, I think that we will be used again. Masud Barzani made a recent statement on Twitter where he said that the Kurds would not be used in any proxy wars. But let's remember that everything can change within seconds in politics. Now, this is what I think will happen, but just to point out, this is only based on theory and there is no certain fact around this. I think that the Kurds will be used as American proxies, especially the Kurds within Iranian occupied Kurdistan and the Kurds within Iraqi occupied Kurdistan. Now, if America would cut a deal with PJAC in Iranian occupied Kurdistan, that they have all the PKK and YPG at their back, as PJAC simply is these two organizations' umbrella group in Iranian occupied Kurdistan. This would mean a huge force supporting the states, and I think that they are likely to take this deal because PJAC's main objective is to fight the Iranian regime, and they are already doing it. And if they can get full support from America, from Israel and from Saudi, I don't think that they would deny it. The question is, how would KRG react? It's impossible to say, but my personal guess is that they eventually also would jump on the American ship. Now looking at the America versus Iran conflict, the states would be challenged, but eventually they would win, because they are far greater in every aspect. So Iran really needs to rely on their allies to support them, and if they can get that support, the conflict will be much bigger, longer and harder for the United States to fight. One thing that we can completely erase from the map is nuclear war. The United States has nuclear resources that would be able to erase Iran from the map. But Iran's most reliable ally, Russia, which is obviously America's most challenging opponent, actually has much bigger nuclear resources than the United States. So if Russia would help Iran, as we all can expect they would do, America would lose in this nuclear war. And apart from that, I don't think that either Russia or America would risk any nuclear confrontation since none of the countries, whether it's Iran Russia, Israel or America would win on this kind of situation. So practically we can erase the nuclear scenario from the map. Now another scenario that is discussed is whether if Iran would make an attack towards American soil. Last time this happened was 9-11 and even though this attack was a very large attack, a very good planned attack, the result of this was the undiscussable attack from the state towards several countries in the Middle East. So I don't think that this would be the smartest move from Iran to attack US soil, but of course you never know with the current sitting leaders of Iran. So if Iran would attack US, on their own soil, we would probably see a new phase of bombings in a much bigger scale towards Tehran. 
Now, the most likely situation is that both Iran and the US attack each other in other countries, meaning that they would attack bases located in, for example, just as I said, bases in Iraq, bases in Lebanon, and so on and so on. What do you think will happen? Do you agree with us? Or do you think another situation will roll out? Leave a comment in the description box below and let us know.